Hey, what's going on guys? It's James here. Today we're going to talk about the Mother 32 again. This is going to be more of a almost old Daft Punk style sound, or maybe like Justice. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more of a almost vocal sound. And uh, again, using the Mother 32, and uh, I'm going to play a quick demo of what the sound sounds like. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. So to make the sound that you just heard, we're going to go over to the synthesizer now. So the way we're going to start setting this up here is with the oscillator. So right now I have the oscillator set to a square wave. I have the pulse width at about 50%, so it's just like an equal amount of uh, you know pulse and then delay between the next pulse. And then I've got the uh, VCO mod amount at about 30% going from the envelope here. So that's switched to envelope, 30%, 50% on pulse width, and square. So if we listen to that, it's your typical square wave. Uh, and my envelope is kind of set up pretty simple. Attack is all the way at zero, sustain is on, and decay is at about 60 to 70%, just to make it a little bit more uh, lifelike, as it's not, if I had the decay all the way at zero, it would just stop after the note is released which just doesn't sound as natural as having the decay at about 60 to 70 percent. It gives it a nice tail to kind of end the note. So, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty nice sound already. And I mean, it's just a pulse wave. So now we're going to start to uh, work with the patch bay and everything to help, uh, you know, edit the sound and make it custom. So before we do that, what we've actually got to do is set it up so that it can accept a input from our MIDI cable here into the assignable output. So this is a really versatile port here. It's something that, as the name implies, can kind of be assigned to a bunch of different outputs, uh, such as like the modulation wheel on a MIDI keyboard or velocity, which in this case, we're actually gonna set it to velocity. So if you look in the manual, there's a bunch of different, uh, there's a bunch of different numbers that you can set it to that correlate to different MIDI inputs. So for this case, like I said, we're going to use velocity, but you could also use those other options. I believe there's about a good 20 different options you can use to edit the value coming out of that assignable port, which is a really cool, uh, you know, quality about this synthesizer is that it does allow for you to expand upon it, even though it's, um, you know, such a simple synthesizer. So to basically do this, what we're going to do is you're going to press reset, reset slash accent, shift, set end, and eight. Now you'll notice this uh, LED here goes orange. So we're going to make sure that that orange LED is at one. If it's not, you can use these, uh, the left and right arrows to make the orange LED at one. And then you're going to press shift and two and that is going to set it to velocity. So now uh, you won't really notice it on the synth right now because there's no velocity on this keyboard. It's just a bunch of membrane switches. But when we go on uh, later into the uh, DAW, we can change the pressure of a note or uh, velocity of a note to uh, make it kind of unique because we can use that assignable output to uh, you know, change values in the patch bay. So to get out of that mode, all you gotta do is just press shift and then one of the left or right arrows, I'm gonna use the left one to get back into keyboard mode. So nothing is gonna really seem different yet, but now we have that assignable output linked to our velocity of the note. So if you have a MIDI keyboard hooked up to it, you might notice once you start to attach things to that assignable output that the harder you hit the note, the more different it's going to sound. And like I said, we're going to use that, utilize that later, but right now we're going to start to use that patch bay, um, just a few simple patches to kind of make this sound unique. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is something that I pretty much 
always like to do with my uh, patches is patch the VCO saw to the external audio. And then I'm just gonna turn the mix over here to 50%. So now we have an equal mix of both square and saw wave. So now what we can do is if we listen to that, you know, you have both those tones of square and saw wave and it kind of gives it a little bit of a different sound because it's not your typical sawtooth or pulse with wave. It's a mix of the both and that makes the waveform really interesting. So the last patch that I've got to do, there's only two patches, it's relatively simple, is we're going to take that assignable output that we just, uh, you know, attach to the velocity and I'm going to just patch that up to the cutoff here. So now if we listen to that, it's not going to sound different, but if we start to mess around with the envelope of the filter and when we go into our DAW, then we can really start to uh, change things around and it'll get really interesting as we move on. So right now I'm going to turn the cutoff down a little bit. I don't know, about maybe 40%. I'm going to turn the mod amount up of the filter. And then let's see if we listen to that. So it's kind of a muted, uh, you know, mix of those waves now. And um, so let's see. So right now that is pretty well set up. I don't think we have to do much more. All right, so now we're going to start to use Ableton. And what we're going to do is take the sound that you're hearing from the synth now, and we're going to start to edit it to make it sound like the sample you heard at the beginning. So right now, if we listen to it, this is what we kind of hear. It's just our buzzy uh, saw square mix sound with a little bit of a filter to it. So if we listen to that, this is all that we get. So it's muffled, it doesn't sound that great, but that's what we're going to be working with now. So we're going to start to use the effects, both built into Ableton Live and also a few plugins. There's just one that um, I'll leave in the description. And there should also be a card in the right of uh, the video that has a link to that. And there'll also be a link to the MIDI file and I'll um, take the drums that I've gotten here and I'll convert them into a like audio file that you can download if you want them as well, uh, so you can follow along. So if we get into it right now, the first thing I want to do is add that um, multiply plugin. So the plugin, like I just talked about, that's up in the or in the description, is right here. It's called the multiply plugin. So I'm going to drag that onto the track of the synth here, and um, we can just actually leave it the way it is. All it is, all it is, is just a widener, which means that instead of the synth being mono um, on both ears being the same value, what it does is it splits it into two channels, and it has each one on a little bit of a delay with a little bit of a different, um, you know, effect chain on it, so that it sounds like there's two different synths almost on each ear. This could also be achieved by um, sampling the synth twice if you wanted to uh if you like um had it on two different audio channels and then set the pan to left and right on each one so that you'd have two different recordings of the synth on each ear so it would be the same notes and the same synth but they'd be a little bit different because it's an analog synth it's going to have its own little inconsistencies and it does make it just um makes the whole stereo stage just wider so that's what this is for, and it um, makes life a lot easier, so you don't have to do all of that. But, um, so if we listen to it now, you know, you can hear kind of the change that it makes. So if we listen to that here, this is what it's going to sound like. So without it, with it. There's also a little bit of like a chorusing effect and everything that goes into it, but the main thing is that it makes it sound bigger than it really is and that's kind of a really important thing in the dance world like dance music world is having synths that just sound big um so that's what this does i really like the way that it uh you know changes the sound so that's why i'm using it here and the next thing that we're going to do <clears throat> is the flanger so i'm just going to use ableton's built-in flanger it does a really good job actually so let's see if i can find it here so if we drag in the flanger 
One thing that I want to do first of all is take the dry wet down to, I don't know, 60, 60 to 70 percent. And the reason I do that is just so that you keep some of the sound of the synthesizer, but you also get the flanger mixed in. Usually the flanger is a really overpowering sound, so I like to have a mix of both the original and the uh, final sound so that it's not as overpowering. It's like a good mix of the both. So if we listen to that now, we get... So it's already starting to get to that sound that we heard at the beginning. It's not quite there, but it's starting to get the essence of that sound. So one thing I want to do is change how it evolves. And then I want to start to use that velocity that I was talking about earlier. So to change how the sound is kind of working, what I want to do is I'm going to take the delay time. I'm going to put it at point, uh, let's see, 1.5 milliseconds. And I'm going to change the feedback to 0.5. And then I'm going to change this plus sign here to a minus sign so that it's actually inverted. So it's instead of it uh, adding to the sound, it's now going to take away. And then I'm going to I'm going to set the rate of the um, flanger to sync to the tempo with this button. And we're just going to set it to three here. So every three bars, it'll reset. It'll like go back to the original point and then it'll start over again. So now if you listen to that, this is going to start to sound a lot more like what we heard before. So if you listen to that now. So now you can hear it almost has that like vocally sound to it. Um, and so that's kind of the sound that we're going for. So now we're going to work with that a little bit more. Like I said, incorporate that velocity uh, that we use in the assignable output and start to change the sound. So uh, what we're going to do now is just to kind of liven up the sound. I'm going to add a little bit of reverb here. And I'm going to uh, decay time about like, I don't know, 2.5-ish seconds around there. Uh, diffuse will bring it up a little bit, bring the dry wet down so it's not as overpowering. Take the size down a little bit, bring the diffusion down in the input. And now it should uh, give it a little bit of a reverb, reverb tail. <laughs> Lastly, uh, we're going to start to mess around with that velocity. So let me just demonstrate here. Here's the MIDI file. So if we bring up the velocity here, you can hear that. So I have the uh, headphones here enabled. So let's see, if I drag one single note and I drag it down, you can hear how the velocity of it is changing the cutoff. So you can hear how that assignable output is now really coming into to use because you can change the velocity of every single note to give it its own unique cutoff value. And that way you can make the sound not as like cut and clean as a normal sound. You can make it sound like an analog synthesizer that has those inconsistencies and everything to it. And so that's one thing that we can kind of start to do here is, um, you know, utilizing that velocity to change that cutoff. So uh, what you can actually do instead of changing every single note is you can actually just use the MIDI effect for velocity here and you can drag that in the front. And then you can actually just apply a little bit of randomness to it. And you'll see that this uh, outer, sh like not shell, but the line becomes highlighted with a thicker and thicker line as you drag the random value up. And that's just showing how far away the random value will be from the original. So now if we listen to that, let me drag this down actually. So you can hear that every note has like a little bit of a different uh, velocity to it now that we added that randomness to it. And uh, so now we can kind of work with that, add that drum uh, like line back into it, add a compressor and basically, you know, clean up the sound a little bit and then we'll actually be all set. So uh, I've got an operator here as my click for my sidechain and it's just like a typical 
um, you know, every quarter note is, um, you know, a click. And then we can use that as a side chain for our sound. So we can bring in like a compressor here, click the little arrow to bring up side chain, bring in the operator as our side chain, bring this down, put the ratio all the way up, and then we'll start to get that, uh, you know, pumping sound along with the kick drum to make this sound complete. So if we listen to that now, we get... So now we're actually right about where we were in the beginning. You know, we can add an equalizer to kind of clean up the sound and get um, some of the really odd tones out of there. But for the most part, that is the sound that we were going for. And I do really like that sound. And like I said, it can be used in a lot of different uh, ways. If you, like for example, go a little bit higher up on the keyboard, say between the third and fourth octave, if you listen to that now, It can actually be used as like a lead and everything. It is a pretty good sound all over the entire range of the keyboard, which is something that usually you can't do, but this actually does work in a lot of different ways. So you can use it in many different situations, which is kind of the beauty of this sound. So uh, like I said, what we can do is kind of just to finish up here is add a quick equalizer. I'm gonna do it before the reverb just so that um, the reverb can, uh, I like to add the equalizer before the reverb just because um, if you start to remove some of the reverb it sounds a little bit odd because um, the whole point of the reverb is to kind of randomize the sound and give it a little bit more um, depth and then if you add the equalizer you kind of eat away some of that depth so I do the equalizer before the reverb so that it kind of adds its natural depth that you expect from that sound like the reverb and, um, you know, so you get the best of both worlds. You get the odd sounds cut out, but you also get the natural sound of the reverb. So uh, what we can do is just kind of do a little bit of a low cut, bring up the bass a little bit, but leave room for the kick. Um, bring down the mids a little bit, bring up the highs, but also kind of cut it off a little bit. And you can probably bring up a little bit above the mids to highs. So if you listen to that now. One last thing I want to do quick is just actually add some glide to it just to give it that little bit of a um, you know, slide between those notes, which always sounds pretty good in my opinion. So I'm gonna put the glide actually about 40% over here. So if we listen to the, this now, this is like the final sound. If we give this a play here, this is what we've come up with. So one last thing I actually want to try with this is to make it almost a pluck sound. Not necessarily like, you know, um, like a dead mouse pluck, but if we take away the sustain and keep the decay right about where it is, I think this could actually sound pretty interesting. So like I said, let's just switch the sustain back to off and I'll leave the decay maybe at like 60-ish percent. Let's try that see what that sounds like. I think that actually sounds pretty good in my opinion. Um, you know, it kind of has a little bit of a, uh, you know, shorter tail to it, which gives it a little bit more, um, you know, time for the other effects to kick in and everything and fill the sound. So yeah, I think that's it for today. Let me know what you guys think about that sound. I definitely like what we created. So, um, you know, let me know if you guys have any, uh, you know, suggestions for future videos, if there's sounds you want me to recreate. Um, also, let me know if you want to see things like maybe remixes or overviews of my old tracks, or me actually just going through my old tracks and trying to maybe salvage an old, old project or something. Or maybe even just something completely different, because like I do film. Would you guys like to see, uh, you know, like short films or something? You know, I do a lot of stuff. So 
let me know what you guys would like to see. And, um, you know, I'm really happy with the feedback I've been getting. I mean, I'm already at like 60-ish subscribers, probably at the recording of this video. And, um, you know, I'm really proud to, you know, have you guys behind the work that I'm creating. So uh, I just want to say thank you. And, uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have any suggestions. So, you know, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.